Here's a quick look at the top stories currently trending on Action News and 6ABC.com. Brought to you by your local Hyundai dealers. Now lease a 2020 Sonata for $139 a month or get 0% APR for 72 months. Action News, Delaware Valley's leading news program. With meteorologist Melissa McGee, Jeff Skaversky, Sarah Bloomquist, and Walter Perez. Sunday night, the big story in Action News tonight is breaking news. A one-month-old is missing, and tonight police are hoping the public can help them find that baby boy. Action News reporter Trish Hartman is live now from Southwest Detectives. She has the latest on this breaking story. Trish. Well, Sarah and Walter, we spoke with the family of this missing baby boy tonight. They are distraught. They say that the one-month-old baby was last seen on Thursday with his father. Now no one can find the infant, and police say the father is not being cooperative. I want you to take a look at this picture of baby James, baby James Garrett Jr., according to the family. He is about six weeks old. He is 20 inches long, 10 pounds. He was last seen with his father in the 5500 block of Spruce Street in West Philadelphia. The baby's family says the child's father has been primarily caring for the baby with help from extended family. This is the child's father, James Garrett Sr. He is reportedly the last one seen with the child on Thursday. Garrett's sister, the baby's aunt, took care of the baby for a few days last week and then returned the baby to his father. Relatives say Garrett showed up this morning without the baby behaving erratically and would not tell them where the baby is. We don't, he's not telling nobody where the baby's at. He keeps saying uh, the baby's with somebody named Pint. Um, we don't know, and he just, I don't know. So I just left the, soft, um, the detective office just now, and he's still not telling nobody where the baby's at. So I don't know. We're just trying to find out, see, make sure my nephew is safe, that's all. Well, I never know him to put, bring harm to a child or anybody, really. So I'm really concerned about what's going on because we just don't have any answers. He's not giving us any answers. Uh, James Garrett Sr. is with detectives right now, but like we said, he is not being cooperative. The family says they are praying that baby James is safe. Anyone who knows anything about the child or his whereabouts is asked to contact Southwest Detectives or to call 911. Reporting live at Southwest Detectives, Trish Hartman, Channel 6, Action News. Sarah. Trish, thank you. Now to our other big story tonight. President Trump, as you know, has refused for years to release his tax returns, and tonight he's facing new scrutiny over his finances. Tonight we have new information on the bombshell headline from the New York Times about President Trump's taxes. The New York Times has obtained several years of the president's tax returns. The newspaper is reporting that the president paid just $750 in federal taxes in 2016 and again in his first year in office in 2017. And it's reporting that the president paid no income taxes at all in 10 of the 50, 15 years prior to 2016. The president addressed that report today. Totally fake news. No, actually I paid tax, but and you'll see that as soon as my tax returns. Are, it, it's under audit. They've been under audit for a long time. The Times reports Trump's properties are struggling and he is hundreds of millions of dollars in debt. According to the Times, Trump's finances are increasingly dependent upon businesses that put him in a, a, a place of political conflict of interest. ABC News reached out to the White House for comment. They referred us to the Trump Organization. An attorney with the organization calls parts of this report inaccurate. Once again, President Trump has denied all wrongdoing and attacked the IRS in response to questions about the New York Times investigation into his taxes. Not surprisingly, reaction to the bombshell report has been swift and wide ranging. Action News reporter Bob Brooks joins us live from Old City with more. Bob. Well, Walter, well, those we showed that uh, report or have seen it, uh, they weren't necessarily surprised. But uh, the real question is whether you think this is right or wrong. And that boils down to who you talk to. Word about the president's taxes has spread quickly through the city tonight. The majority of people we spoke with say it's just not fair. Someone as wealthy as the president has allegedly paid so little when it comes to federal income taxes. There's people that are making so much less money that are paying way more money for that. I can't deal with that. They also say even if it was legal for the president to avoid the taxes, it's not right. There's nothing you can do about it. That's why we got to vote, go out in numbers. 
According to the New York Times reports, Trump paid $750 in federal income taxes in both the year he ran for president and in the first year in the White House. The report also states Trump paid no income taxes at all in 10 of the previous 15 years, largely because he reported losing much more money than he made. 750 bucks is somebody's entire check. That's how they live every... I gotta go before I snap out for real. However, in the reports, a lawyer for the Trump Organization, Alan Garten, told the Times that most, if not all, of the facts appear to be inaccurate. He also said in a statement that the president has paid tens of millions of dollars in personal taxes to the federal government, including paying millions in personal taxes since announcing his candidacy in 2015. And not everyone thinks Trump's tax records are such a bad thing. Tonight we met Dan Van Burra. He says if the president was able to avoid taxes, he should. If he does it legally, that's perfectly fine. Now again, Sarah, the president says at some point he will release his tax information. However, at this point, no timetable on that. Now we're putting live in Old City, Bob Brooks, Channel 6, Action News, Sarah. Bob, thank you. Well, just days before the first presidential debate and just over a month before Election Day, the push to confirm President Trump's nominee for Supreme Court is well underway. Federal Appeals Court Judge Amy Coney Barrett will soon face a contentious confirmation battle. This week, Barrett will meet with several people, including Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell. Joe Biden is appealing to Republican senators to do, quote, the right by the American people and delay the proceedings. The confirmation hearing is set to begin with opening statements on October 12th. ABC News will have a special primetime coverage of the first 2020 presidential debate between President Donald Trump and former Vice President Joe Biden. The debate takes place Tuesday night starting at 9 p.m. right here on 6ABC. Following the debate, you can watch the highlights and analysis on Action News at 11. Meanwhile, seven early voting centers will open on Tuesday in Philadelphia at satellite election offices across the city. The offices will be open seven days a week. Voters will be able to register, request a ballot, fill it out, and return it all at the same location. In addition, voters can bring in already completed ballots. When you do fill out your mail-in ballot, remember, be extra careful to enclose the secrecy envelope, then the outer envelope that is signed. Turning now to your AccuWeather forecast, it has been a rather dreary weekend across the region. Now we're bracing for some steadier rain this coming week. Meteorologist Melissa McGee over the Action News Big Board with the AccuWeather forecast. Melissa. And Sarah, this unsettled pattern started out on Saturday with areas of patchy fog and drizzle in the morning, followed by scattered showers throughout the day. We had that once again this afternoon. Now looking at the picture tonight, Storm Tracker 6 Live Double Scan Radar showing you that rain starting to fill in a little bit in some locations. We'll go in tighter on street level with storm tracker six you could see that light rain in philadelphia same thing to the south and west and upper darby pressing into marion over into ridley and also across areas in new jersey there in west deptford even some uh, pockets across areas in egg harbor and moving to the north of atlantic city so we're in and out of this moisture that is also helping to reduce the visibility across the region we're down to two miles in philadelphia down to four in trenton down to three miles in wildwood so a lot of low level moisture and also a lot of humidity up ahead. Dew point temperatures are rather summer like in the upper 60s and around 70 degrees here in Philadelphia, 69 degree reading there in Cape May. So satellite six along with action radar showing you this uh, pesky stubborn upper level low across the region that is moving back to the west, igniting the showers across the region. We'll talk about what we can expect unsettled early this week with summer like humidity up ahead. Damp pattern with heavy rain likely Tuesday into Wednesday behind that much cooler later on this week with a bit of a fall feel overhead. Details coming up with Full and exclusive AccuWeather Forecast Walter. All right, thank you, Melissa. Tonight, new at 11, police are investigating a deadly shooting in the city's Feltonville section. It happened on the 4500 block of North Oriana Street at about 4:45 this afternoon. Investigators say the 46-year-old victim was shot twice in the stomach. He was rushed to Temple University Hospital, where he died a short time later. No further information about this case has been released at this time. Organizers with two protest encampments in Philadelphia say they have reached a tentative agreement with the city. They say the city has agreed to give homeless activists 50 vacant and viable homes. Under the agreement, those homes will be transferred to a community land trust. Organizers say they hope to meet with city officials again this week. I mean, we know they could do better, but we are satisfied with the agreement if we are able to get homes that are in a slightly decent condition and not like homes that are have the backs falling down and stuff like that. 
The city of Philadelphia released a statement saying it remains in negotiation with representatives of the protest camps, but many details remain to be worked out. The statement goes on to say that any agreement will require a date by which the camps will be resolved. For the first time this season, the Eagles did not lose. Unfortunately, they didn't win either. The Birds tied Cincinnati earlier today at the link. The Eagles were up 13-10 at the half, but the Bengals made a comeback. The game went into overtime, but no one scored before time expired. It ended in a 23-23 draw. As you'd imagine, fans are not pleased with the way the season is shaking out. It's, it's stressful. Very stressful. Next time. Oh, that was a real bummer. That was absolutely terrible. That's, that's all that needs to be said, man. There's not really much that needs to be said about it. That was absolutely terrible. Missing Nick Foles, you know, like it's, it's tough. Yeah, he won for the Bears today, you know. Well, next week, the Birds head out west as they take on the San Francisco 49ers in search of their first win. The Jewish high holiday of Yom Kippur began this evening at sundown. The Day of Atonement is the holiest and most somber day on the Jewish calendar. Ordinarily, synagogues will be crowded tonight and through the day tomorrow, like this video from last year. But this year, the pandemic is forcing many people to stay at home. The day is marked by 24 hours of fasting, prayer, and reflection. Much more to come in action news. An intruder allegedly walks into football legend Joe Montana's home and kidnaps his grandchild, how he saved the nine-month-old baby. Plus, we're learning new details about the ballistics reports in the Breonna Taylor shooting. And a mother talks about her little boy who died from a brain-eating amoeba. Those stories and more when action news at 11 comes right back. Hey, Philadelphia, we have an important election coming up on November 3rd. Help shape the future with your vote. Your last day to register is coming up fast. For more information, visit IamAVoter.com. The stakes couldn't be higher. Trump, Biden, debate number one, Tuesday night on 6ABC. Then at 1030, go to 6ABC.com for live reactions with local pundits and Brian Tapp as the moderator, Tuesday night on 6ABC. We've all had to find different ways to keep busy. Tonight, a deeply disturbing story out of Malibu involving NFL great Joe Montana, whose infant grandchild was nearly kidnapped. ABC's Zoreen Shah has details. The L.A. Sheriff Office saying a female suspect entered a Malibu home where Montana and his family were around 5 o'clock Saturday night. That's when they say she kidnapped Montana's nine-month-old grandchild from the living room, then walked upstairs where the football hall of famer and his wife confronted her, taking the child back. The suspect ran to a nearby home. That's where Malibu deputies found her making their arrest. Montana tweeting tonight, thank you to everyone who has reached out. Scary situation, but thankful that everybody is doing well. We appreciate respect for our privacy at this time. The 64-year-old former 49ers and Kansas City Chiefs player known during his career as Joe Cool for performing under pressure was considered one of football's greatest quarterbacks, winning four Super Bowls, named Super Bowl MVP three times. Zorin Shah, ABC News, Los Angeles. Now to new information in the Breonna Taylor case. The state police ballistics report does not support the claims of the Kentucky Attorney General, who says Taylor's boyfriend shot a police officer the night she was killed. AG Daniel Cameron said Wednesday that friendly fire was ruled out as the source of the shot that hit the police officer, prompting him to return fire. But the ballistic report says that the bullet was not identified as having been fired from Kenneth Walker's gun. Walker, Taylor's boyfriend, was licensed to carry and fired when officers burst through the door of her apartment. They opened fire, killing Taylor. Now we move on to the pandemic and fears of a second wave across the U.S. and around the world. Tonight, concerning scenes of packed bars and restaurants in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, with few wearing masks and no social distancing. This after the governor lifted all restrictions on restaurant capacity across Florida. The state crossed a grim milestone of 700,000 cases and more than 14,000 fatalities. In New York City, meanwhile, more than half a million students are headed back to in-school learning on Tuesday. The date had already been pushed back twice. This is New York, as New York is currently seeing a new surge in daily cases, topping more than 1,000 for the first time since June. This man from Maryland has been sentenced to a year in jail for hosting two large parties in violation of the state's COVID-19 order. Police say 42-year-old Sean Marshall Myers held a gathering with more than 50 people back in March. 
When officers confronted him, he sent everyone home. Authorities say he then held another party five days later, and this time he refused to break things up. An emergency order from Governor Larry Hogan had prohibited gatherings of 10 people or more. Still to come on Action News tonight, the birds tie with the Bengals in overtime. Jessica Versky has the highlights, and you can hear more from head coach Doug Peterson. And taking a live look at Sky 6 down at the shore, meteorologist Melissa McGee with your exclusive AccuWeather 7-day forecast when Action News comes right back. This business means everything to me. I invested everything I had. When COVID became an issue and we were closed, it was really scary for us. Susan was always available to help. She reassured me. She was a big proponent of direct loans and grants for businesses like mine. Also the expanded unemployment insurance. I felt like I could breathe again, knowing that someone cared about small and micro businesses. That is really a priceless thing. I'm Susan Wild, and I approve this message. At Raymore and Flanagan, we're here to help you love your home, where each day brings new moments in your life. Lessons are learned, work is done, and milestones are celebrated. We're committed to delivering you comfortable new styles that make your home your happy place. That's why you'll save 15 to 20% on everything at our refresh sale, in-store and online. Upgrade your comfort and style now at Raymore and Flanagan's Refresh Sale. Yeah, I think we're good here. Why do we offer so many active safety features on our Chevy SUVs? Oh, yeah. All set. Ready, Freddy? Because we're not just engineers. Call us when you get there, okay? Slowly. I'm going slow. We have families, too. Get 15% of MSRP cash back on most 2020 Equinox models. That's over $4,800 cash back on this Equinox. Plus, current competitive owners get an additional $750 cash allowance. If you elect me, your taxes are going to be raised, not cut. What does that mean for you? More taxes taken out of your paycheck. Higher gas prices at the pump and utility bills at home. Skyrocketing medical bills. You'll compete with illegal immigrants to keep your job. An economy in ruins. President Trump is bringing jobs back. Historic gains. 10.6 million new jobs in four months. President Trump fixed our economy before. He's doing it again. I'm Donald J. Trump, and I approve this message. Mom! They're just chit-chatting away. Got another update from school. Here's AJ! So when are you going back into the office? I mean, I don't know, Dad. How's that? How's that? Is that better? Well, we have a safety net. We'll be okay, right? Maybe we should talk to someone. Who is Jeff Van Drew this year? Whoever he needs to be to get elected. New Van Drew switched parties and raked in over half a million dollars from big business and special interest groups. He votes with them now, too, and against tax cuts for homeowners and the COVID relief New Jersey needs. He'll say anything to help himself. You have my undying support. Thank you. But Jeff Van Drew won't do a thing to help you. House Majority PAC is responsible for the content of this advertising. Closets by design. Save 40% plus free installation. Visit us today. A mother from Texas is grieving after the sudden loss of her six-year-old son. Doctors say he died after contracting a brain-eating amoeba. His mom says his symptoms included a fever, vomiting, and headache. He tested negative for COVID, but a CT scan revealed swelling in his brain. Maria Castillo says her son had not gone swimming in a lake, pond, or a creek, but he did play at a splash park. Probably won't make us feel better, but the fact that we know how he got it, how he contracted it, just gives us, you know, that peace of mind knowing that we can, we know. Issued a warning regarding new concerns that the water supply in southeastern Texas may be contaminated with the brain eating amoeba. All right, Melissa back with another check of the AccuWeather forecast after a fairly cloudy Sunday. We're looking ahead to some 
it's pretty steady rain. Yeah, and unsettled for the start of our work week. So over we go to the Weather Center and showing you the picture outside, trying to see what's going on behind me. I promise you uh, this is a picture of the Brandywine camera in the Center City skyline, but hard to make out what's going on behind me because visibility is reduced to two miles because we're dealing with a lot of low level moisture and areas of patchy fog, even some light rain moving on through. So for the rest of tonight, we do have a 20% chance of finding that rainfall. It's already pressing in along the I-95 corridor. We'll bump that up and double it to 40% on Monday, but steadier rain arrives as we get into late Tuesday and into Thursday and Wednesday, I should say, and then by Thursday, we're down to a 20% chance of finding that precipitation. Then behind that, it does get cooler as we get into the end of this week and into the start of next weekend. Here's Storm Tracker 6 Live double scan radar. You can see we're tracking that moisture across the region. We'll go in tighter on street level with Storm Tracker 6. You can see we've got that rain right along the I-95 corridor into Philadelphia, pressing into Chester, even some moisture moving into Gloucester and Glassboro. If you look at the direction of that rain, it's coming in from the south and south southeast and moving back to the north and northwest. You can see it all the way up into Norristown. Another pocket that we are tracking over across Upper Pitts Grove, over into Atlantic City and Galloway, on westward into areas in Delaware. So the moisture will continue on and off, and there's a lot of humidity in the atmosphere as well. 71 degrees right now in Philadelphia after a summer-like high of 81, 65 in the Pocono, 70 for Wilmington and Dover, down the shore in Cape May. We're coming in at 69 degrees. Here's satellite along with action radar what we're tracking you can see it we've got this swirl right along the Atlantic so all of that moisture out along the Atlantic is pushing inland igniting those showers and the instability across the region and unfortunately this is going to be the pattern as we return to work tomorrow so for the next 12 hours lots of clouds patchy fog and drizzle during the overnight hours will dip down to 63 in the suburbs and 67 there in Philadelphia so here's future tracker six during the overnight hours you can see that moisture scattered about the region nothing terribly heavy across the area. Six o'clock in the morning, a mostly cloudy start to the day in areas of patchy fog and drizzle. A couple of sunny breaks are likely as we get into three o'clock in the afternoon. A trough of low pressure is going to move on through and ignite a few more showers, but that steadier rain really develops as we get into late Tuesday afternoon, carried over into Wednesday. Then finally behind that, a big reverse in the pattern. So a temperature plunge is on the way. On Monday, look at the high. We're calling for a high of 81. By Friday, the end of the week, just 67. So we're a good 14 degrees cooler by the end of the week and feeling rather like fall by then. Here's exclusive AccuWeather 7A forecast. Early fog, then it's warm and humid. High up to 81. 77 on Tuesday with steadier rain developing at night. Still unsettled on Wednesday and cooler 72. Morning shower on Thursday with lower humidity 71 by the afternoon. Look at this by Friday into next weekend. High temperatures in the middle and upper 60s. I'll send it back over your way, guys. All right. Thank you, Melissa. Well, believe it or not, that was Melissa's last forecast here on Action News. It was 11 years ago. She arrived here at 6 ABC and instantly became part of her family and embraced by the Delaware Valley. But she's decided it's time to go home to California. Melissa has been nothing but a delight to work with for those of us both in front of and behind the camera. Here's a quick look back at some of her work over the last 11 years. First year I started here at Channel 6 was December 2009. Two weeks on the air and we just got walloped with <laughs> snow. On the storm we had. Seems like my paddle has a one track mind. To FY Philly, we are tracking a few showers overhead right now. Down to two miles as far as that visibility is concerned. First time we hit 90 so far this year. I tell you, the things I do for TV. But I'm ready to go, <laughs> let's do it. <laughs> Look at her hula hoop in there. You got the hips shaking. Check out what's going on this weekend down at the shore. Think I caught something. It's been my passion, Walter, and I've had the pleasure of being a coach for Girls on the Run. It's a program that uses running as a way to empower girls, boost their confidence, and build lasting friendships along the way. In case you don't know, Melissa is awesome. Melissa was one of 12 local celebrities dancing for charity. Before I ventured into the world of television, I wanted to be, when I was an itty bitty girl, I wanted to be a dancer. Sequin sisters are here and we are red carpet ready. Let's pose. Yeah, and we're going to talk style and fashion in just a little bit, but of course we're here for the car. There's a whole lot to love here with so many beautiful Mediterranean-inspired exhibits to explore. It's the perfect place to spring into shape. <laughs> I love this. 
dorms. We look like Skittles, by the way. Just we went, randomly it's noticed very, that. It's very primary. Whoop dee doo. I'm the queen yeah. bee. Yeah. <laughs> Ready for the beach. Oh my gosh, Melissa. <laughs> We're going to miss you. I'm going to miss you. Yeah. Just God bless. And anything you do in the future, we just hope all the best. There's only success to come. Thanks. We know that about you. I'm, you know, it is bittersweet because over the years, we're not only just co-workers and colleagues, we are friends. So that's the hard part in saying goodbye. But I'm certainly looking forward to being back home with my family and enjoying time yeah. in that Cali Your sunshine. mommy's going to be happy with that. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah, they're really excited. Bless but I really am going to miss you all. And of course, the Delaware Valley. For well, we'll stay in touch. I said it in the piece. I'll say it again. <laughs> Melissa is the best. Melissa, I can second that. Thanks, you're, you're the best. We'll miss your smile. It's very sweet. Thank you. We love you. <laughs> Action News comes right back. Health care costs are out of control. The only way to ensure that people get the health care they need is through real solutions, not political games. In Congress, I'll work to lower health care costs, protect coverage for pre-existing conditions, and I'll stand up to the drug companies to lower prescription prices. Even before COVID, too many people in South Jersey were denied access to mental health services and affordable health care. It's time for that to change. I'm Amy Kennedy, and I approve this message. It only Action News Sports is sponsored by Buick. At the heart of every SUV is you. Visit your local Tri-State Buick dealers. All right, time now for a check on sports. And the good news is the Eagles didn't lose, but they didn't win either. Jeff Skaverski joins us live from home with details. Jeff. Walter, the Eagles look awful again today. They're off to their worst start in 21 years when Doug Peterson was the quarterback. And frustration is starting to boil over for the current quarterback. Carson Wentz throws his helmet today, slams it out of frustration as the turnovers and the questionable decisions continue to mount. Wentz says he has to be better, and he will be better than this today against the Bengals. Down one, late third, bad throw for Zach Ertz. Second interception of the game, six on the season. Wentz has the most turnovers in the NFL. Next drive, third and ten, overthrows a wide-open Miles Sanders. It could have been a touchdown. Wentz can't believe it, missing targets again. But Wentz gets it together. Late fourth, 41 seconds left. Down seven from the seven. Wentz in trouble, takes off 65 yard. Rushing today for Wentz, dives, touchdown. Eagles tie it. First touchdown of the second half of the season. We go to overtime in OT. The Eagles can win. Final seconds. Jake Elliott, 59-yard field goal attempt. Never gets off. False start on Matt Pryor. Knocks him out of field goal range. And instead of a 64-yard attempt or even give Wentz the ball for a fourth down attempt to win, Peterson punts. Settles for a tie. Yeah, that's how it ends. He didn't want to give the Bengals the ball back potentially at midfield with a chance to win. Eagles finishing a 23-23 tie. They're winless after three games. Jamie Apodi has more. Jeff, I take you back to November of 2008 when the Eagles tied against the Bengals in a game where Donovan McNabb famously said afterwards he didn't know that games could end in a tie. Well, we all knew today. We just never would have believed it would have happened against the Bengals team that went 2-14 and 14 last season. And yet here we sit. So what could Doug Peterson have possibly told his team after this one? Here's his message. I, I told him in the, in the locker room after the game that, that, uh, that we weren't a very, very, very smart football team today. Tying is no fun. Uh, I don't think I've ever been in a tie, so it's just kind of an awkward way to end the game. But the fight was there. The effort was there from guys. We just got to be smarter, play cleaner. I got to be better as well. Philadelphia Eagles, we have one standard. Um, and that's winning at home and, and not playing for a tie or a loss. Ever since I've been here, you know, as soon as things go bad, you know, people want to start panicking. We ain't panicking. We just know it's a it's a different type of year, and we're going to get it right. So the guys won't admit that they're angry, but you got to believe deep down they have to be. And, Jeff, how about this one? There have only been 10 ties in the NFL in the last 18 years, and two of those games have been between the Eagles and the Bengals, who only play each other once every four years. And Lincoln Financial Field, Jamie Pody, Channel 6, Action News. Boy, do we have a lot to talk about. Julian Deuces Rogers for Sports Sunday coming up at 1145. Plus, I'll talk with Ron Jaworski about what's wrong with Carson Wentz. What's more frustrating right now, the Eagles or the Phillies? The Phillies needed the Giants and the Brewers both to lose today. That happens. So all the Phillies have to do is win one game this weekend 
and they make the wild card and the playoffs. Brutal finish to the Philly season. They lose seven of their final eight games. Aaron Nola in trouble in Tampa today in the third. Joey Wendell, who grew up a Phillies fan, a two at RBI single. Nola allows three runs in three and two thirds. The season slips away. Phillies lose five nothing. They are officially eliminated. Get this, they've missed the playoffs nine straight years. We were up and down all year, right? And it was just kind of how we played. We were streaky, and we happened to finish on a bad streak instead of just an okay streak, and it was the difference in our season. We had opportunities to, to win games, and we just simply didn't get it done. Um, I feel like that's been all year long. Second goal. Aaron. Let's kick with soccer. They're the best team in town. The Union taking on Miami. They scored twice in the second half. That's from El Sino. Union win 3-0. They've won six of nine. And by the way, Jimmy Butler leading Miami to the NBA Finals against LeBron, which will be here on 6ABC starting Wednesday. Sarah, back to you in the studio. And I just want to say congratulations to Melissa. Best of luck. I'm going to miss her laugh for great weather reports and that smile. And she has a little picture on my desk back there. Oh, nice. Yeah. She says, she says, bye, Skaversky. Yeah, and she's like, like, whatever, yeah. whatever. We're, we're going to get together. We'll yeah, do a little we'll socially later. distanced thing and Stop talking. give her a proper goodbye. <laughs> she's the best. She is the best. Thanks, Jeff. More Action News right after this. The coronavirus. This is their new hopes. We think the death will be at a very low number. We have it totally under control. I like this stuff. I really get it. People are surprised that I understand it. One day it's like a miracle. It will disappear. We really think we've done a great job in keeping it down to a minimum. I wanted to always play it down. I still like playing it down. No, I don't take responsibility at all. Priorities USA Action is responsible for the content of this ad. Cheese plate coming through. Cool tiny home. I'm a man of simple means, yeah. Oh, you have Xfinity X1. Yup, I got my live TV, DVR, even my streaming apps like Peacock. All right here. Show me Parks and Rec on Peacock. <laughs> See? Easy living. <sighs> this house is too small. That's Ben. He's tall. X1 just got even better with Peacock Premium included. Now that's simple, easy, awesome. Get started with Xfinity Internet and TV for $54.99 a month for 12 months. Switch today. Get $1,500 customer. Prayers were said this evening in Wilmington, Delaware. For those affected in recent double shootings, the prayer was held on the 2400 block of Tatnall Street where the shootings occurred. A prayer chain allows a group of people to call in by phone or other communications as well. From there, they will begin praying for loved ones with concerns during these troubled times. It's always nice down the shore and a group of elementary school students in Wildwood, New Jersey are proving it. During the COVID-19 shutdown, they began painting seashells with messages of kindness to hide all throughout the island. Action News community journalist Matteo Ardenisi shows us why they did it. Grab a shell. You know, everybody's in the same storm, but different boats. And so you never know what the next person's going through. So sometimes kindness can make a world of difference to someone. And to get that positive message that kids put on the seashells was phenomenal. All the sudden, the world just decided to um, shut down. But we um, fought through it, tried not to complain. And we painted shells and drew positive messages on the back. Try to lighten everyone's mood because everything that's happening in this world. Look, we're going to hide on in the fire. It was just all so different, and there's never been something like this before. Just by hiding these around and just people just looking at them, it just gives them a little bit of brightness in their day. Ready? One, two, three. Honestly, I'm taking what life's throwing at me. I'm a nurse, and I have three little girls. I'm not overachiever mom. I'm just doing what, you know, makes my kids happy. And I have a lot more feet. The lockdown started. Being outside was therapeutic at the time. There was no playground, so we would just take walks and hide the shells. They missed their friends, so it was kind of just a way for them to like reach out. So we ran around town and we hit them in different places. Of course, all the other moms wanted to get their kids doing it because they were looking for activities for their kids. It just took off. Guys, I got a pumpkin! <laughs> I think I definitely learned that no matter what happens, you just take it day by day and you'll weather the storm, you'll be okay. They, they grow up so quickly and before you know it, they're gonna be teenagers um, and moving on. So this time we'll never, you'll never get back. So take it while you can. <laughs>
Action News for its Sunday is next here on Channel 6. Action News continues at 4 tomorrow morning with Tamla Edwards, Matt O'Donnell, Karen Rogers, and David Murphy. Now for meteorologist Melissa McGee, Jeff Skaversky, Sarah Bloomquist, and the entire Action News team, I'm Walter Perez. Have a great night and a great week ahead. And bye, Melissa. I'm Melissa. Bye, guys. Love you back. <laughs> <laughs>